Let's start out with a problem. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. What is the value of x? So we can write it this way. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So if they're similar, that means that the ratio of the sides are the same. So the ratio between DE and AB is the same as the ratio between EF and BD. So if you want to write an expression, you can write it like this. So the ratio between DE and AB is equal to the ratio of EF and BC. And that's equal to the ratio of DF and AC. So notice that A corresponds to D. Now, similar triangles have congruent angles. So angle A and angle D are congruent. B is similar to E. So angle B is congruent to angle E. And C, the third letter, is similar to F. So angle C is congruent to angle F. So what do we need to do in order to find a value of x? So x is df, so we need to use this fraction. And we have de, so we need to use this fraction. So we need to set de over ab equal to df over ac. Now de is 9. ab is 3. And df is x. ac is 4. So let's cross multiply. 9 times 4 is 36, and that's equal to 3 times x. So if we divide both sides by 3, we can see that x is 12. Actually, let me write this here. So now let's move on to part b. What is the enlargement ratio of triangle DEF to ABC? So how can we find the enlargement ratio of DEF to ABC? Well, we can take the ratio of DE to AB. So DE is 9, AB is 3. So what this tells us is that the side lengths of DEF is 3 times bigger than the side lengths of ABC. So to go from AB to DE, we just need to multiply by 3. To go from AC to DF, we need to multiply by 3. 4 times 3 will give us 12. So therefore, we can use that to calculate the value of Y. 6 times 3 will give us 18. And so that's the measure of Y. Now, we can confirm this with a formula. So let's set up a proportion. EF is similar to BC and DE is similar to AB. So EF is Y, BC is 6, DE is 9, and AB is 3. So if we cross multiply, this is going to be 3Y is equal to 6 times 9, which is 54. And so 54 divided by 3 is 18. So you can use both techniques to get the missing side. 2. Figure ABCD is similar to EFGH. What is the perimeter of EFGH? In order to calculate the perimeter, we need to calculate the value of all four sides of this figure. We have one side, so we've got to find the missing 3. So let's calculate the enlargement ratio. So if we take the second figure and divide it by the first, that's going to be 12 divided by 9. And we can reduce this. 12 is 4 times 3. 9 is 3 times 3. So if we cancel a 3, we will get an enlargement ratio of 4 over 3. So if you start with 9 and you multiply it by 4 divided by 3, it should give you 12. 9 times 4 is 36. 36 divided by 3 is 12. So we can use that to calculate the other three sides. 
So starting with 12, let's multiply by 4 over 3 to get EF. So instead of multiplying first, we could divide first. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And 4 times 4 is 16. So EF is 16 units long. Now let's focus on EH. So 18 times 4 divided by 3. So 18 divided by 3 is 6. And 6 times 4 is 24. Now let's focus on the last side, GH. So let's take 15 and multiply it by 4 over 3. So 15 times 4 over 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 5 times 4 is 20. And so that's a simple technique that you can use to calculate the missing sides of a similar figure. It helps if you calculate the enlargement ratio first, and then you can use that to find the other sides. So now let's calculate the perimeter of EFGH. So it's going to be 16 plus 12 plus 20 plus 24. Now 16 plus 12 is 28. 20 plus 24 is 44. And 28 plus 44, let's do this the old-fashioned way. 8 plus 4 is 12, carry over the 1. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 2 is 7. So the perimeter is 72 units long. Now I'm going to show you another way in which you can get the same answer. And the first thing you want to do is calculate the perimeter of the first figure. So it's going to be 12 plus 18 plus 9 plus 15. So 12 plus 18 is 30, 9 plus 15 is 24, and 30 plus 24 is 54. So if you have the perimeter for the first figure, you can use it to calculate the perimeter of the second figure. Simply multiply it by the enlargement ratio. So it's going to be 54 times 4 over 3. Now 54 divided by 3 is 18. And 18 times 4, well 10 times 4 is 40, 8 times 4 is 32. 40 plus 32 will give us 72. And so that's another way in which you can calculate the perimeter of the second figure. Number 3. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. What is the sum of x, y, and z. So whenever you have two similar triangles, you need to know that the corresponding angles are congruent. So once again, A corresponds to D, B corresponds to E, C corresponds to F. So angle A and angle D are congruent. So if A is equal to 40 degrees, then D also has a measure of 40 degrees. Now notice that E is congruent to B. So if E is 55 degrees, then B is also 55 degrees. So now that we have these two angles, we can calculate the value of the missing angle. And the three interior angles of a triangle must add to 180. So angle A plus angle B plus angle C has to equal 180. So A is 40, B is 55, and we need to calculate the value of C. So 40 plus 55 is 95. So C is going to be 180 minus 95, which is 85 degrees. So angle F, which is congruent to angle C, is also 85 degrees. So now that we have the measures of all three angles, we can now calculate the value of x, y, and z, and we can determine the sum of those three letters. So let's start with x. So 4x plus 12 is equal to 40. So first, let's subtract both sides by 12. And so 40 minus 12 is 28. And let's divide by 4. So 28 divided by 4 is 7. Therefore, x is equal to 7. 
So now let's move on to y. So notice that 5y is equal to 55. So if we divide both sides by 5, 55 divided by 5 is 11. So that's the value of y. Now let's move on to z. z squared plus 4 is equal to 85. So first, let's subtract both sides by 4. 85 minus 4 is 81. Now let's take the square root of both sides. The square root of 81 is plus or minus 9. Now I didn't specify whether to use positive or negative values, because z could be both. So let's get two answers. So z could be plus or minus 9. There's no reason why z can't be negative 9. Because if it's negative 9, we will still get 85 degrees, positive 85. So the sum of x plus y plus z, we have two possible answers. The first one is 7 plus 11 plus 9. So 11 plus 9 is 20, and 20 plus 7 is 27. So that's the first possible answer. The second is 7 plus 11 plus negative 9. 7 plus 11 is 18, and 18 minus 9 is positive 9. So the sum of x, y, and z can be 27 or 9. Both answers are acceptable. Number 4. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. The enlargement ratio between DEF and ABC is 4 to 1. If the area of triangle ABC is 50, what is the area of triangle DEF? So we can see that DEF is the larger triangle. It's four times bigger than ABC in terms of side lengths. Now, how can we relate the enlargement ratio to the area? In previous examples, if we want to find the new side length, we will take the old side length and multiply it by the enlargement area. So side length 2 would be equal to side length 1 times the enlargement ratio, which I'm going to call R. And using a similar equation, we were able to calculate the perimeter of a second figure given the perimeter of the first one. So we can say that P2 is P1 times R. Now what about the area? It turns out that the second area is going to equal the first area times R squared. If you think of the units of the side lengths of a triangle, let's say like the base and the height, or for a rectangle, length and width. The units for these would be like feet to the first power, meters, centimeters, inches, but all raised to the first power. Perimeter would also be measured in feet, meters, centimeters, and inches. However, area is unit squared, such as square feet, square meters, square centimeters, square inches. So to get the right answer when dealing with area, you need to multiply it by the enlargement ratio to the second power. So you have to square the enlargement ratio. Now before we actually get the answer for this video, let's use an example problem to illustrate these formulas. So let's use a square. So let's say this is square 1 and square 2. Now let's say that square 1 has a side length of 2. What is the side length of square 2? So using the formula s2 is equal to s1 times r, the side length of the first square is 2, the enlargement ratio is 4 to 1, 4 divided by 1 is just 4. Let's say if the enlargement ratio was 5 to 2, then I would say 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, so I would use 2.5 for r by the way. So 2 times 4 is 8. So this side length is going to be 8. So now we can calculate the perimeter, which is the sum of all four sides. So the perimeter for the first square is going to be 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 four times, or simply 2 times 4, which is 8. And the perimeter for the second square is going to be 8 times 4, which is 32.
So we could say that the second perimeter is equal to the first one times r. The first perimeter is 8, and if we multiply it by a common ratio or an enlarging ratio of 4, 8 times 4 will give us 32. And so we could see that the formulas mentioned do indeed work. Now let's focus on the area. The area of a square is length times width, so we need to multiply 2 by 2. So the area of the first square, which we'll call a1, is 4. Now using the formula, we said that a2 should be a1 times r squared. a1 is 4, and r is 4, but we need to square it. 4 squared is 16, and 4 times 16 is 64. Now if we multiply the length by the width, 8 times 8 will give us an area of 64. So we can see that these two answers do indeed match. So now that we know that the formulas mentioned do indeed work, let's finish this problem. So let's begin by drawing two triangles first. This is triangle ABC, and here we have triangle DEF. Now the enlargement ratio is still 4, 4 to 1. And the area of the first triangle, which we'll call A1, let me write it inside. That's 50. What is the value of A2? Now using the formula, A2 is going to be A1 times R squared. So A1 is 50, R is 4, and 4 squared we know is 16. So it's 50 times 16. And so that's going to be 800 square units. So that's the answer to the first problem. Now let's focus on the second one. If the perimeter of triangle DEF, which is P2, that's 120, what is the perimeter P1 of triangle ABC? So we know that P2 is P1 times R squared. I mean, not R squared, but just R. So P2 is 120, and R is 4. So to calculate P1, we need to divide both sides by 4. So 120 divided by 4 is 30. And so that's the perimeter of the first triangle. 